Uh, so what we did is we started off by, because our focus was, was in the, uh, um, uh, was what Anglo Platinum's uh, interventions, we looked at uh, the areas, we tried to focus on the areas where most of the platinum operation is happening. So this is mostly in northwest province and in Popo and a bit in Mpumalanga. So you can see that the major platinum reserves. So we said let's start by the areas uh, where the, the center of the, of the mining operations are because this is by law, these companies have to recruit eventually people from those areas and they are looking for engineers and technicians so they really need the, uh, the youth from these areas to become well proficient in math and science so that they can give them scholarships and then uh, give them jobs later. That, that's the whole drive. So we looked at Anglo Platinum's uh, interventions. Now, Anglo American as a whole is probably the, is the biggest corporate social investor in the country. The whole group is, is we are talking about 600 million rand a year in, in uh, social investments, and platinum alone is 300 million. Kumba is also quite similar. So Anglo's budget, I just want to underline, is bigger than the World Bank's, the UN, DFID, France, JICA, all of these major donors have a smaller development budget than Anglo has in this country. Wow. So um, that was, that's quite an interesting thing about South Africa. So we, we focus again in the areas where, where Anglo Platinum was doing its work. Um, there's also some tribal communities, Bafokang uh, and others. And what we did is we looked at uh, AMPLAT's social labor plan uh, between 2010 and 2014, which was mainly, which out of that, the portion which was dedicated to education was about 100 million rand. And this included a range of activities from ECD all the way to adult education, from infrastructure to training, from learners to teach everything. They even directly support the government. They, they had a wide range. And this was done obviously in, in conjunction with the local authorities. Now for our study, what we decided to do is, uh, we decided to focus on the um, FET program. Obviously they had other programs, but we decided to focus on the FET because this is what mattered the most in terms of their immediate results that they needed for, for their uh, recruitment plan. So if we look at their FET programs, their program was in about 137 schools in, in the two provinces, Northwest and Mpopo. And we focus, they, these 137 schools got different treatments, different, different packages of different interventions by different service providers. But more or less, most of them received supplementary Saturday classes uh, for the kids, um, winter enrichment camps every year to, to boost their, their learning before matric and educator training. So we looked at what was the impact of this on, on their results. So obviously there were some um, uh, questions strictly correlated to uh, Anglo's operation, which I won't go into this presentation because it's more their business, but I, what I will focus on is what was the impact of the presence of the mines in, um, in learning in the open northwest? Um, if the progr Anglo program had any impact, all of this investment, and what can we learn from it for the future? the other mining companies but other uh, practitioners in this field. Like what really works? What is the most effective, impactful intervention to improve math and science? So we use a mixture of methods, qualitative uh, field work. Uh, we spend months in the Pope and Northwest interviewing different stakeholders and, and so forth, but we also use heavily quantitative impact evaluation instruments, econometric work, experimental work, and so forth. Um, so we, do, we spend months in the, in, the, in, the, in the provinces interviewing principals, teachers, HODs, provincial district officials, all kinds of people, service providers, to get a good picture of like the situation and understand things that we wouldn't understand from the numbers just to... Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the, but the, the data, we had a huge data set which comprised of all the information we had on Anglo interventions plus other service providers and, and uh, institutions intervening in this area. We had uh, data on all the um, NSC exam results of the last five years. We are, uh, Oma Lucy is a close partner in this project. And we had very rich school administrative, demographic, social economic data from the Department of Education, from EMIS and Stats So after cleaning and, and all the things that treating uh, of all the data that we had to do, we ended up with an amazing data set of 1,412 schools as our data. Uh, each of these in, in, in Popen, 385 in Northwest, each of these schools 
132, 33 variables. We could tell a lot about each of these 2,000 schools almost. How many teachers they had, how many learners, percentage of black learners, if they had science lab, as much variables that we could control. So um, now what we were measuring, like for the MNE people, you're all familiar with these words mm -hmm. in results-based management. So what we were looking at is obviously not inputs, activities, and outputs, but really outcomes. This is what we were trying to look at. And there's a lot you can, of types of outcomes you can measure. So what we were measuring clearly was learning, particularly learning in math and science. How do you measure learning? So you can have a whole range of indicators and measurements, and we looked at various options. We could look at the TIMS, the SACMEC, the ANA, also we could look at the test that HSRC, JET does, and so on. But then we decided finally to use the National Senior Certificate 12 grade exam. And people have different opinions on these, so I just want to put out up front the disadvantages and advantages. The disadvantage of, of using the, the, the metric results is that academic literature has proven time and again that most of the learning happens at earlier ages and at earlier grades. So we know that you're not going to get huge change in, at you know, the last years of high school. Most of the learning happens earlier. We also had a system change in 2007-2008 in metric, so that's something to keep in mind. But something uh, that is, is quite funny for somebody who's not from South Africa is that to pass metric in South Africa, you can pass with 30%. <laughs> pass with 30, yeah, well, 30, well, about, about 30. So in other countries, as you know, 50-60% you need to, to pass. But South Africa, we have very low uh, standards of of passing 12th grade. And obviously a lot of, of uh, these numbers also don't reflect the full picture because many drop, drop out before. Yeah. Very few actually would start in grade one and end up uh, passing grade five. But why did we take, use this at the end? First of all, it is uh, assessed by uh, the Umarusi, an independent central institution. So there is some kind of standardized assessment system. There's the same system that is followed throughout the country. You have comprehensive and detailed information about every single school in every part of the country in every year and every people. So that is very unique data that you wouldn't get elsewhere. And it's a fairly good indicator for how prepared for university and for tertiary training learners are. So okay, so we looked at the two provinces, uh, the pass rates and overall. So the blue is the overall pass rates. Again, remember it, with the 30, above 30% and above your pass. But so we thought what might be more interesting is bachelor pass because that's what makes it to university. So the red is the bachelor, and the and the, and the blue is, is passes. So you can see that Northwest performs a bit better than Limpopo, but overall bachelor passes are below thirty or twenty percent. The and obviously they are under, so we are doing something good, better because we are improving step by step. But um, the, interest, the reason why Limpopo is also uh, underperforming compared to Northwest is also a simple thing that Limpopo has three or four times more schools than Northwest. And uh, getting the similar type of resources, and probably Northwest gets more attention because there's a Bojanala and all the platinum mines. So uh, it, is, it is fairly understandable that Northwest is performing better than, than Limpopo, which is more rural and poor province. So then we looked at math. Uh, and science specifically the subjects. So the blue is the participant, the learners writing the, the exam. The red is the passes. And uh, again, because you pass with 30 percent, we, we try to raise the bar of it to 50 percent. We call it math excel and science excel, and that's the green. So okay. So the interesting thing is, okay, math and science have been gradually increasing if you look at the red. But the participation in the subject has been declining at the same time. So that means you have let more, more learners passing, but uh, less learners uh, writing. So it's, it's, you have a selection. And, and so it, it, uh, it, it shows that you, you, uh, things are not really improving, as, uh, not as positive. 